Hello everyone, good morning, Rochelle White. Merry Christmas, Caroline Shoronka, good morning. Merry Christmas, Adeleke Adeneyi. Merry Christmas to all of you, Eric Kosadalo. Daniel Asenga, Eric Lindu, Christy Bassi, Ife Odeyemi, J.D. Craig, Ladi Shorunke, Adeleke Adeni. By the way, you guys, I think today's message is going to be the most important one I've preached. Uh, out of this series on raising up children because uh, I've been talking about value systems and how not to become a biomass, how not to raise up a biomass. So, but, but I've not given you the list of values that you need to systematically develop in your children. So today is going to be very, very important. The list of value system, values that you need to uh, instill or develop in your children so that they will not be biomasses but that they will become real humans the list of values that you need to develop or that you must develop in your children so that they will become real people real personalities is that real human instead of biomasses so today is going to be very very important the list of value systems that you must develop in your children if you don't want them to become biomasses. So I would like us to go ahead and share the link right now. Let's go ahead and share the link and invite our friends. Uh, it's going to be one of the most important, one of the most important messages you will ever hear. And I want you to take your pen I want you to take your computer or whatever you, you can use to write it down. We need to begin to write some of these points down. They will go ahead to help you. So take your pen, uh, take your computer, take your smartphone, and we'll be giving, I will, I will because actually this, this uh, message that I want to give you today is supposed to take me one month just this message alone today is supposed to take me one month one month to to teach so i'm not going to teach this morning i'm just going to give you the list the general list of um of these values so you remember what i spoke to you about that we need to, you need to have a systematized and a structured system of raising up your children so what that means is that you have at one day or every day whereby you meet with your children uh, between three, 30 minutes to one hour and a half hours, you uh, discuss with them, talk to them about values and take, take different topics. And that's what the children were talking about yesterday, that I opened uh, pages that talk about value systems and we begin to discuss them. They, everybody participate on equal, on equal level. So, um, Merry Christmas to all of you. Good morning, Merry Christmas. But like you already know me now, I'm not big to, on festivities and, you know, making fun, making, uh, having fun. Uh, I use Christmas and holidays to, for constructive development and con constructive uh, promotion of the kingdom of God. So, thank God today is Christmas and today we can use it as a time of constructive development. For ourselves and for the future generation so um, so if you have shared the link we'll be ready to start the teaching right now so go ahead and share the link please if you don't mind uh, press the share button it's under your video uh, let's press the share button it's under your video somewhere there and uh, once you have shared it let me know and we can go ahead um, by the way, uh, how, was my, how was the time yesterday with my children? 
what was your opinion? We are going to be back with you today, of course. We are going to come back with the children today uh, in the evening. Uh, but, you know, how was it? How was it? You have your opinion? How was the time with the children yesterday? I hope you enjoyed it. Wow. Noel Okushuku's birthday is today. Noel Okushuku, how are you doing? Wow. You are one of the most constant person on this platform. Well, congratulations to you. Happy birthday to Noel. You shared a birthday with Jesus. Ooh, you must be a very important person, Noel. Wow, wow. Wow, you are... <laughs> you are Jesus' uh, no, bad day boy. Amazing. 25th of December. <laughs> we are so very happy for you, uh, uh, Noel. And congratulations to you. And may the hand of God rest upon you. May the life of Christ be reflected in your life. And may you be the continuation of the beauty of Christ's life, of the values of Christ's life, and of the equality that Jesus brought to, to the world. May you become a reformer, a transformer, and a life changer like Christ was in his time. May the, from this year, may your destiny begin to be unfold. And... Uh, and the, the fact that you have come across Pastor Sunday and that you are here, uh, I think it's going to be, it's going to go along. It's going to be the confirmation. It's going to be the springboard for you to be able to really become the person that you wish to become and that you never even dreamed that you could become. So uh, happy birthday to you, my dear brother. Very proud of you. And I'm very proud of all your efforts that you are making to, make, to become a better husband to your wife and to your children, a father, and thank you for learning and changing and having a, a repentant heart and a humble heart to receive not just the good, but the bitter and the and some of my very, <laughs> very, uh, very tough teachings. Uh, but you are one of the ones that don't really uh, fight against the truth, but embrace the truth. So may the blessings of God abide upon you like you have never thought possible from this new year on, in Jesus' name. So, well, I really hope that uh, yesterday's meeting with the kids were good. And if you want, if you have some of your questions for today, uh, in the evening, get people together and call your friends and let's, uh, mm, let's, uh, let's, let's meet together. Let's, uh, Let's come and hear the kids again. Let's ask them all these questions that you might have. Another thing, though, is that, uh, mm, you know, and I, I just looked at the program yesterday, yesterday's program, and I discovered that it is, it is a blockbuster. <laughs> We've never heard it so high before. Uh, we have had 20, 28, about 30, almost going to 30,000 people that have watched that program with the children since yesterday. And uh, so by the end of the day today, it might even be more than that. That's one of the highest we have ever recorded. The only other time we recorded as much as that was uh, during HMT. But the HMT was a whole day thing. But this was just an ordinary program. And uh, almost 30,000 views already. Uh, so that means that what the children were talking about was really great or that it was uh, a blessing to people, or people like that, or people were impressed by that. So, uh, so I hope that today will really be a continuation of that, of that particular uh, time we had together. But today, I want to give you a list of the value systems that must be uh, cultivated in you and in your children, especially in your children. So the list of the value systems that must be cultivated in you uh, and in your children, especially in your children, since they are young, uh, what are the list of the value systems that must be developed and cultivated in your children? Okay, here we go. 
And I, like I said, this message is supposed to be for two days a day. I mean, two days a day, like I normally do, morning and evening. It's supposed to last me one month. This, there are supposed to be 30 hours of teaching here. But instead of 30 hours, I'm going to try to do it in one hour or one and a half hours. So, because it's so important, I will, I will not teach, I will just give you the list. So, you might want to get a, uh, a somewhere to write or a smartphone or, you know, at least to keep it. So, what are the qualities and the value systems that you must develop in your children so that they will not be biomasses through life, so that they will not just be a bunch of uh, flesh, so that they will not just be biomass? But what, how can you develop your children and yourself so that you, they will become personalities in life? See, I'm, my children, like you said yesterday, so you see that I'm not just talking. These are the things that uh, are real. These are the realities that we live by on a daily basis. So um, I want to give you that, that list. And it's not just a list that could be used to develop your own children, but these value systems could be taught to everybody, either young or old, adults or in school or in families. You can build a system of coming, like I said, the, you know, building values has to be systematic. Just like schools are systematic, just like colleges, universities are systematic. The, 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 that, there has to be a system of building values. It has to be consist, consistent, it has to be permanent, it has to be all the time. At least for the period of seven years, your children must be taught these values on a regular basis every day. By the time you put that, like parents were saying yesterday, by the time he got to the university, he didn't know where all his wisdom were coming from. And then he just discovered that, ah, this is all as a result of what dad has been putting in us since we were young. So, uh, so let me give you the list of the value system that we need to raise up in our children. First of all, Proverbs 22 verse 6 said that we should uh, teach a child in, a, in the way that he should go. We should, uh, you know, and then he will not depart from that way. So, uh, it is... It is a scientific fact that if you teach the children the first seven years of his life, the values you put in children between the age of three to seven or between the age of three to 12 are those value systems that will remain with them for the rest of their lives. Uh, so the first value system that you want to put, you want to teach your children is teach them about God. And don't teach them about God as a religious person. If you want to, in fact, one of the things that you could do is to just even put my videos. You remember that I, you know, all those my videos that you see, all those series, you can just put one series and for one month be listening to them. Listen together to the series and discuss. Listen together, stop them and discuss. For example, I was talking about prayers and personal relationship with God. So some of that's one of the most important things they will ever learn because they will know that the personal relationship with God is different from religion. So the first thing you want to teach them about God is to love him. You don't need to teach them about too many you know, theology and things like that. Just teach them about God, how to love God and how to honor him and how to have personal relationship with him. That is Mark, Mark, Mark 12, 30 is the first and the most important, uh, the, the first and the most important uh, commandment. So, and you know, any topic that you want to instill in them, you already have them. When I was uh, doing this, I had to find all these topics different places. But now all these topics are already on my blog or on my YouTube. You can do the video for them, they can, you, you know, because that's one of the things that we did. Also, we are watching the videos together, or you know, or we are reading the articles together, or the books together, and things like that. The next thing you want to, the next value, the thing you want to teach your children is about themselves. Once you have discovered, tell, told them to discover God as a loving God that must be must be loved. The next thing you want to teach them is about them. Who, who, who they are and where they're coming from. You must teach your child to know that he is, come, he is made to be an image of God. 
you must teach him that he is first of all God's image and God's likeness before he is so, uh, Solomon, Joshua, uh, uh, Sarah, uh, you know, no, Helen or things like that. That what you are first of all is God's image, and based that on uh, first um, I mean, Genesis chapter one verse twenty seven, let them know that the best identity they could have is that they are coming from God. That is their number one identity, and that identity is more important than the identity people call them. It's more important than their look. It's more important than their body. It's more important than their family name. Tell them that their surname is not even as important as them knowing who they are and where they are coming from. They are image and likeness of God. I have a series on that also. Where are we? Where are we coming from? Why are we here? Why are we here? And why planet Earth? You know, you, I have a series on that on video. The next thing you want to teach them is that they should not just know, like to, uh, learn to know God, that God is, that they, they, and love God, but they must also know that since they are God's image, they must also love like God. Because God, they, they, God, you know, uh, God, God, God is love, and since God is love, and he created them in his own image, that their, their nature is to love. So first of all, you taught them about who God is, how to love God. Secondly, you teach them about who they are, that they come from God. They carry God's image. So their, 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 their highest aspiration on daily basis is to be like God, is to copy God and the values of God. That makes your children to be automatically God pursuers, God pursuers, and to make God the most important person in their lives. Then the next thing you want to touch, teach them is that since you are an image of God and you want to be like God, you need to also live like God. And what, who is God? God is love. So teach them that love is the most important value that they could have in their lives. That they must lo learn to love people. And love supersedes. Don't teach them to pray for, to, against their enemies. Or don't teach them to tell people fall down and die. Don't teach them to pray against the village, uh, the people in the village and your grand, your stepmother or your stepsister or your step this. Don't teach them to be focused on enemies and don't teach them to be focused on Satan. Let them be focused on love. Let them know that love is their nature. Love is their nature. Next point. The first, the next thing you want to teach them is communication. You want to teach them communication with God or how to fellowship with God, which people call prayers. But I will under, I will underplay prayer, 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 the way people call it prayer as a religious function or as a religious practice. I would rather call it fellowshipping and practicing the presence of God and talking with God. Just fellowship with God. So you could call it prayers, but I would call it fellowship with God. So tell them how they could deepen their relationship with God, how they could improve their fellowship with God, how they could be friend of God through prayers. But not under, uh, underplay the play, prayer part. Under, uh, underline more the fellowship part. Because right now in our churches, we have a lot of people who know how to pray. But they don't even have any relationship with God at all. So the they prayer has become religion. But the purpose of prayer is actually supposed to be uh, fellowship, intimacy with God. So teach them intimacy rather than prayer religiously. Next point that you need to teach your children. Teach your child to know that there is no reason for fear. Teach your child that he doesn't have anything to fear in his life. Teach him that since God is in, in him, God, no, his attitude to fear. Just teach him the right attitude to fear. Yeah, healthy fear, you know, you don't jump from the 10th floor without anything, but 
tell them that God is with them. They don't need to fear Satan. They don't need to fear people. They don't need to fear challenges. They don't need to fear obstacles. That they should know that he, greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. So because they fellowship with God, because they have relationship with God, because they have intimacy with God, there is nothing to fear. So that should be the next topic. Nothing to fear. Never fear anything. Because you, you remember, right? Second Timothy 1, 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of love, uh, sound mind, and, uh, yeah, and power. Next thing you want to teach your child is the authority of the word of God. You want to teach them to fall in love with the word of God. Now, how should you teach them the word of God? Don't teach them the word of God that the word of God is just the Bible. Don't teach them Bible and don't present Bible to them as a religious book. Present Bible to them as a book of, as a book through which they know the mind of God. Present the Bible to them as a book through which they discover God's heart, God's desires, God's wants, and God's dislikes. Present the Bible to them as the book of truth and as the book of principles that where they should learn to model themselves after what they should learn to model themselves after where they should go to get values and to derive principles for life don't just teach them bible about, like a mystical book no teach them bible as a book of no you know modeling life and their lives and society in general Next thing you want to teach them, you want to teach them about caring for others. That even when you don't have anything, even when you don't have anything to give, when you don't have anything to offer, always give people, always give people, uh, you know, you can offer to people love and prayers. Tell people that they could always give people love and prayers. You know, tell them to care for people. Teach them to care for people through love and at least prayers. Prayers, they could pray for the poor people. They could pray for their country. They could pray for their church. They could pray for their... The, 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 the greatest prayers they can ever pray is that God's will will come to pass on earth as it is in heaven. The greatest prayer they could ever pray is that God's will will come to pass in people's lives, in their own lives, and that God should use them to bring about the will of God on earth. So true love and prayers, they can care for the needs of people and for needs of God. Next thing you want to teach your children is to teach them about faith. Tell them to, to know, no, teach them to know that faith in God and faith in yourself is what they need to survive on the earth. But when it comes to the earth, teach them that they need more faith in them, in themselves, out there for, to, for them to function on the earth. Faith in God, they need it to go to heaven and they need it to be able to relate with God. In, in, in an intimate relationship but after faith in God faith in God must lead to faith in self and that without even if they have faith in God without faith in themselves they will be useless but they must have faith in themselves faith in God leads to faith in self and that faith in self is what we call self-value self-value the next thing you want to teach your children is to teach them about joy Teach them to always maintain a state of joy and peace in their heart. Let them know that there will be sad moments in life, there will be difficult times in life, but they should always meet all things with joy. And that, you know, they should also not just, you know, you know be joyful and, be, and know how to get inspiration for themselves, but they also give joy to other people. And also teach them that they don't need to look for joy in external things. They shouldn't look for joy in sex. They shouldn't look for joy in drinking. They shouldn't look for joy in smoking. They shouldn't look for joy in their pornography. They shouldn't look for joy in the wrong places. Next, you want to teach them 
it is to teach them about the, per the person of Christ. And the way you want to teach them about Christ is not just to t tell them that Christ is, an, is a, someone that was on earth and is religious figure. Tell them Christ came for us to be able to copy Christ, I mean God better. Christ came to manifest God so that we'll be able to know how to copy God more and more effectively. So Christ came for us to be able to see his behavior and to be able to derive values from him and uh, value systems and principles from him. So tell them to look, uh, tell them to look at, at Christ as somebody that they could derive their life principles and values from. The next thing you want to teach your children is to teach them about heaven. Let them know that heaven is our home, is our is our is our native land, is our na native country, and that that is our ultimate goal. And they should always think about heaven every day. They shouldn't look at the earth as their ultimate, but they should look at heaven as their ultimate goal. The next thing you want to teach them is that since heaven is our ultimate goal, so why are we here? We are here, therefore, to fulfill heaven's mission, heaven's purpose. Now, this is the place you begin to teach them about purpose, about purpose. So that first, all those things, I've, all these points I've given you now, I think there are 10 points or so, or 11. All these points I've given you is a block. So this, is, this block, this first block I give you is the block about God. You, your child, and God. So it's a block about, you know, uh, about the, your child and God. So this is a whole block on God and your child. Now the next block that I want to give you is the block on uh, your child and the rest of the world. Your child and relationship with the world. So your, your, your child or you, you and the world. So those 12 points are for... Uh, your child and in relationship to God and God's you know, desires from him. But this other block that I want to give you now is, uh, you know, because what I'm, I'm, I started from is to love God and to love people. So we're starting from that uh, uh, commandment. So the relationship with God is what we just gave you. And this is now in relationship with people, with humans. So in that same Mark, chapter 12, verse 31, that we looked at, it says to love God with all your heart is the first commandment, and the second commandment is to love people, to love people. Okay, so <clears throat> what do you teach your people, I mean your children in this sense? You teach your child that there are different people in life. Teach your child that there are different people in life. They are the good, they are the bad, and they are the, you know, different. You should learn to know that they are different people. They are white, they are black, they are short, they are tall, they are uh, ugly, they are beautiful, or any, any how they plan, that everybody is valuable. The only thing that makes people valuable is that they are made in the image of God. So teach them to value everybody because everybody just like him is made in the image and likeness of God. So let him teach him to know that people are the same family. We are all of the same family. Either we are, they are Jews or they are Muslims or they are Buddhists or they are different religions. We all belong to the same household of God's image. We all carry God's image. Therefore, every human deserves to be loved. Despite their sin, despite their culture, despite their color, despite their where they are coming from, everybody deserves to be loved. So treat everybody with love and with respect. Teach your people, your child that. The next thing you want to teach your child on this category, that's number one. Number two, I'm, I'm giving another list, okay? You understand this is a different list in the category of relationship with people. So, apart from uh, the first one I just gave, the second one, teach your child to have empathy to people, to always have, to learn to have empathy, to, uh, to sympathize with people, to have feelings for people. 
Because in Romans 12, 15, it says, Rejoice with those who rejoice and cry with those who cry as well. So let him know that the, one of the highest values a human being could have is to understand another person, is to feel the pain that the other person is feeling. Empathy with other people. The next thing you want to teach him at this stage is that he should never be egocentric. He should always put other people, God's needs above his own needs. And he should also put the need to love others, the care about others above his own comfort. He should not never put his own comfort and his own selfish desires and his own selfish needs as, as paramount. Love, the care for God, for the will of God, and for the goodness of other people should always be above his own particular, his own particular needs and, and, and problems. So it's all fight, it's all sacrifice should be to, for him to make it so that he will be able to raise other people up. So teach your child to, to overcome egocentrism. Teach your child to overcome selfishness. Teach him to live an, a life of empathy. Next point. Teach him to live for something greater than himself. Teach your child that he must have a goal in life. They must have a purpose in life, like we said over there. And that purpose must be greater than himself. What does that mean? That, that means he must be ready to pay the price of discomfort for the sake of the goal. And his goal should always be in, for, for, for the benefit of the kingdom of God and for the benefit of humans. So uh, he, he must live for something greater than himself. He must pour out his life to sacrifice. He must put up for God and for people. So the, 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 the needs of God and the needs of uh, people must, must be over and superior to his own personal needs for comfort and for gain. By the way, I hope that this, is, this teaching is the best teaching. You know, I, not that I hope, I believe it is the best teaching you could ever, uh, anybody could ever dream of. Uh, not just for your children, but for yourself. So it, because these are the teachings that will help you not to be biomasses, but to be human being. And also, uh, so it's my, it is my Christmas gift. Today is Christmas. It's my Christmas gift to all of you. And then my children will come with their own Christmas gifts. They will give you uh, questions. I mean, they will answer your questions and uh, interact with you like they did yesterday. But also, you know that I have New Year gift for you. It's my book, uh, Insulted by Ungodliness. Wow, that insulted by ungodliness. I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know what it will do to you. Insulted by ungodliness. It will give you so much fire. It will give you so much fire. It will give you so much passion. That insulted by ungodliness will put so much energy into you. <laughs> you, will, you will want to go and do revolution right, right, right now. You will, you will want to go and turn the world upside down. So that book is still there. It's going to be for a giveaway price before the end of the year. But after the end of the year, it's going to be expensive. So you want you, to, you want can get it on I think Amazon maybe uh, I don't know if it is there on Okada yet, but on Amazon it's there already. So next point that you want to teach your child is to teach your child to be a giver. Since he's living, since he's living for, not for himself, but for purpose, for God's purpose, for the purpose of God and people, he must be a giver. And the first thing he has to give is to give of himself. He has to be a, a giver of himself. He has to be willing to give his time to give his money, his resources, he has to be a giver because life makes meaning when you give of the gifts and the things that God has given you. 
next thing you want to tell teach your child is he should not speak evil about other people he should not walk to put other people down to speak evil about people or spend or spread rumors about people let him know that you don't want and nobody likes to be spoken evil about nobody want rumors to be spoken about them he shouldn't do that also he shouldn't just carry people's stories that people who carry people's stories people who live uh, out of the stories they hear about other people and tell those stories they are slaves in life let them be living for vision let them your children be living for purpose let them be concentrated not on what people say about other people they shouldn't be carried away by by other people's uh, stories and rumors this one did this this one did that i'll go and read what they said about this what they said that is that people who do that never go far in life don't ever be uh, distracted by other people's sin focus on your own mission in life and focus on your own sin don't focus on other people's sin and don't ever discuss them tell them about that the next point Tell them also that they shouldn't use their life trying to look for enemies or, you know, to criticize people. They shouldn't run about their lives trying to criticize other people or look for enemies. They should just focus. All those things are things that take them away from their vision. All these things are distractions that take them away from their purpose. So once you begin to criticize other people, you never have time to do to focus on your own purpose. Once you begin to uh, look for enemies, you never pursue purpose. And once you begin to look for, uh, read people's stories and people's sayings, you never pursue your purpose. So these things will help him to, uh, to, you know, to, to be able to focus on what matters in life. Next point. Teach your child that he is uh, beautifully and wonderfully made. I think that is Psalm 139. Uh, is it Psalm 138? Is it Psalm 138 or 139? Verse 14 or so. Anyway, teach him that he is beautifully and wonderfully made. Let, let Teach him to be satisfied with himself. Teach him to love himself and to accept himself. Know that he is the best in the world. That nobody can be better than him. Not with pride but with self-satisfaction. And you will see that in my, in my children, if you were there yesterday, everybody is satisfied with where they are. They are not competing with daddy or with mommy or with each other. Or everybody is satisfied with what they have and who they are. Teach them to be satisfied with who they are and what they have. Okay, let me give you, that's, that is the second group, second group of values I am giving you. Let me give you another, number three group of values. Let me give you another group of values. Number three. So in the first group of values, I gave you 12. In the second group of values, I gave you eight. The next, the next block of values will be, the Bible says to seek the Lord, I mean, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So I want to talk about the group of values that borders on the righteousness of God or on the, on the, on the commandments of God, on the righteousness of God, on the, on the, yeah, on the, on the, um, commandment of God. The first was 12, Deborah. The first was 12. So go and check the list that some people have written up there. You will see that there are 12 values in the first group and now there are eight. The next, value, the next group of values is about God's righteousness. Matthew 6.33 
tell, teach your people that the desires of God and the will of God should always be number one in their lives. Tell them that you know nothing exceeds the will and the purpose of God. Nothing exists and uh, nothing exceeds. Nothing is superior. Nothing surpasses pleasing God. Nothing surpasses pleasing God. You know, seeking his will. Even Jesus said he came to do the will of the Father. Your children must know that. That in anything, either they are sick or they are well, either they are in trouble or they are in crisis or things are good or in joy or pleasure, they should only seek to do the will of God at all times. Nothing surpasses the will of God. So they should make that paramount in their lives. There is nothing like do, seeking to do the will of God. Number two, teach them about instruments of doing the will of God. The instruments of teaching the will of doing the will of God. The platforms, the most important platform that God has given us to do the will of God or to accomplish the will of God on the earth is the church. But the church that we have today is not building. They shouldn't think about church as the building. He is the church. He is the temple of God. The gathering of the people of God at temple of God is the church. The fellowship of believers is church also. But they, you should teach your child about church. That church is not building. Church is not singing uh, fast songs and then slow songs. Teach them about the real church. That real church is where two or three are gathered together in my name. And the real church is himself as a temple of God. Teach them that, but the church, the, the former church also could be very powerful if they are done well. Teach your children to know the difference between church and religion. For unfortunately, most churches have become religious centers. Organized religion, unfortunately, kicks away God from church. And, the, and stands on the way of people knowing God. So let people, let your children know that even if you are dead and you are not, if you, even you took them to a certain church and that church becomes formalized and that church becomes organized religion and that church becomes, uh, uh, you know, just, you know, religious center. Tell them that even when you are dead, they should be free to leave that church and look for a place where which a church is only seeking to do the will of God in the sense of advancing the kingdom of God. The, own, the church that is only seeking the advancement of the kingdom of God and its righteousness and working towards that on daily basis aggressively. And the church that is always helping people, raising other people to do that. If not, they should walk away from that church and do, and even they should downplay church. You know, today, church has been, is being uh, elevated even above man. Tell them that church shouldn't be elevated above the man. Church shouldn't be elevated above, above humans. Church should not be elevated above the person, above himself. So when churches are being turned into idol or idol worshipping centers, or when church and denominations have become idol themselves, your children should know that they should leave those places. That the most important thing is people. God died for people. He didn't die for church structure. He didn't die for any denomination. He died for people, for human beings, for individuals. So let them know that even though church is powerful, but church is only powerful as long as church is doing the will of God, as long as the church is committed to advancing, to aggressively advancing the kingdom of God and its righteousness on the surface of the earth. Church is only significant and powerful when the church has not lost its focus. Church is only significant and powerful when the church is committed to equipping every member of the church to becoming all that, that they could become. Church is only needed and powerful only if that church is helping every member to do the purpose of God for every for that member. Uh, so, but when churches are being the importance and significance and church are being put on the top, and the members now have to be serving the church as if the members are the slave, and the church and the owners of the church are the slave masters. Each day, your children should leave those churches and rather sit at home and have personal relationship with him than go to those churches. So, churches shouldn't be. They should know where church is and where there is no church. Churches shouldn't be placed over and above the human being, the, the members or any member. 
So the church should be an instrument that is serving the members. The church should be a tool that is promoting the love for God and love for people and advancement of the, the kingdom of God and through the advancement of the children of God. So, but when the church is the one that has become the focus, when the church is the one that has become the center, when the church has become the goal, they should run away from those churches. Church is not the goal. The goal is the kingdom. The goal is the kingdom. And the church is just a tool and an instrument, a platform through where uh, the will of God and the kingdom of God is being promoted and being established. Okay, next point. Teach your children to love God's, God's creation. You know, a lot of children today, they don't have any response to God's creation. The highest of God's creation is people. The highest of God's creation is pe are people. So they, they are the crown of creation. And that's why in uh, Psalm 8, verse 4 to 8, I think, yeah, I think Psalm 8, he says, you know, he has exalted man above all other things. And he made him, he has given, crowned him with honor and glory. And he has made him the head of all creation. So, uh, so the 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 the, the uh, so the creation of God, the highest of all God's creation, is people. And so your son should know, or your child should know, that this is the highest of all God's creation. And that, uh, but apart from people who are God's creation. God also created a lot of other things. God created, created nature. So that's why we must explore nature. We must love God's creation. We must fight for the nature. We must protect the nature. We must, you know, get inspiration from the nature. Even the Bible said that the things that are created by God, they show us who God is. You know, through it, we get to know God through his own creation. So, so you want to teach your children to, you know, to learn to explore to explore the sea, to explore the forest, to explore the trees, to explore the ocean, to explore uh, the earth, to explore the land, to explore uh, the, 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 the firmament, the, the, the sky, the moon, the planet, to study the planet, the beauty, you know, that is how discoveries are made. That is how uh, sciences bring about the beauty of God. You know, all these things are created by God. And when we explore them, when we discover them, we discover our God, our Father, we discover our, our His nature, we discover His wisdom, and we can use that wisdom to make our world better. We can, you know, you discover the nature of God and use all that to enrich us. That's how minerals have been discovered. That's how riches have been discovered. That's how prosperity comes. That's how we, you know, we exploit new uh, things for our development. The development development of our world, the economic development, the technological development, they all hinge on our study of nature. So we don't just study people, we don't just love people, so we don't just get locked up in people and in church. We also let our people go and explore, because that is when people think that it is only God's people that God created, then we only want to do church work. We only want to become pastors and things like that. But when we know that nature is also created by God, and through exploiting nature, we exploit God. We go give God. We discover God. That also teaches. I mean, that makes us to. That teaches our children that they could. They could. They, they could find their callings not just in church. They could find their callings not just in fivefold ministry, but they could find their calling in every sphere of the earth. And that this whole earth is created by God and must be used and exploited and subdued to praise and glorify God. Next thing you want to teach your children is to know, is to teach them to be people of justice. They should, they should proclaim God's justice on the earth. They should establish the justice of God on the earth. What does that mean? They should, you know, walk against evil. They should know that the whole world is, work, is living in evil. And we are instruments of God's righteousness. We are instruments of God's righteousness. We fight for his, his, his will and his purpose on the earth. Uh, in Psalm 82, 
Uh, it says that the whole earth is shaken. The foundation of the earth is destroyed because the righteous, the sons of God, they are not establishing righteousness, justice for the widow, for the strangers, for the uh, orphans and things. They are not taking charge. They are not taking responsibility. So you must teach your children that they are supposed to take responsibility for the earth. We are supposed to be managers and rulers of the earth to bring God's righteousness, justice and truth to the whole earth. The next thing you should tell your people, your, ch your children, is to know that God operates in the vertical order, in the, um, in the chain of authority. God operates under a chain of authority. God himself is one, but even in that oneness of God, we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then when it comes to the earth, we have the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, when we have uh, the church, when we have the husband, we have the wife, then we have the children. Then also in every structure, the Bible says that every power, every authority is from God. So we are not rebellious people. We don't fight against God's authority and we don't fight against human authority as well. We work with authorities. We establish authorities. We uh, work with, you know, we don't fight against government. It's not our nature. We, we can tell the truth of the government. We, we can, uh, you know, but we don't fi fight against authority. God works under the vertical, no, the uh, chain, no, vertical chain of authority. God, God works in, 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 in the chain of authority. God is a God of order, and one of his orders is the chain of authority, maintaining a vertical, vertical uh, line of authority. So we don't fight against elders. We respect orders. So teach your child to respect authority. Never to be rebellious. If you don't agree with the authority, leave that particular environment, or you know, you know, to let them know your opinion. But don't be rebellious. Don't fight against people. St step out. You know, leave the place or move to another church. If you don't agree with what the church is doing, go to another church. But leave with respect. Leave with honor. Thank them. Write them a letter. Give them recognition and leave. But we don't fight against authority. We are not rebellious people. Because people who fight against authorities, they always have repercussions. And it's against God's order. God says in Romans chapter 13 that all powers, all authorities are from God. And that we, people who fight against authority, they fight against God. So we don't do that. And you want to teach your children to respect authority and to honor authority. Next thing you want to teach your children that is connected to this one I just said is learn, they should learn to be second. Your children, even though God wants us to be first and first only, but recognize people who have gone before you. Recognize people who are your senior. Recognize people who have done what you have not done. Recognize people who are your senior. Recognize people who are older than you. Recognize people who learn, who, who have done what you have not done. Recognize people who could teach you something. Recognize people who are teaching you. Give them honor. Respect them. Don't ever treat people who are your senior as your equal. Don't ever treat people who are your elder as if they are nobody to you. Always walk in honor. Learn to be second. Don't put pride as your as your as your brand. Don't be too powerful. I mean, don't be too prideful in your own eyes. Don't be too righteous or too holy in your own eyes or too. Uh, don't be right in your own eyes. Learn to say you to submit. Learn to know your place. Learn to know where you belong. Learn to be humble. Learn to not to be. Learn to be second. Learn to even you know step back and let other people be right. The Bible says you should rather be wrong than you know than for you to go into conflict. So if necessary, if somebody wants to take even that place, sometimes learn to know when to step back and say, okay, if you want to, please go ahead. And learn also when to fight for your own place. But when people are ahead of you, when people are your senior, when people know what you don't know, learn to be second and learn to learn from them. Learn to you know, step back, learn to humble yourself and learn to be meek. Learn to be meek. Teach your children that as well. 
<coughs> Next point. Teach your children what is sin and how destructive sin is. Teach them to hate sin. Teach them to run away from sin. And, but also teach them that everybody sins. Teach them that there is nobody that will be righteous. And they will fall. But teach them that the righteous falls several times and get up again. But the most important thing in this kingdom of God is that you are striving. Striving towards God's righteousness. Striving towards God's holiness. But you will never reach holiness. You will never reach righteousness. Righteousness and holiness is not a bus stop. It's not an established event. It's not something that could be accomplished. It's something that is ongoing. It's something that is continuous. So the more you strive, the more you pursue righteousness and holiness, the more righteous you are. So it's not about what you do. Righteousness is not what you do and what you don't do. So don't let them look at sin as do's and don'ts. Righteousness is pursued. It's either you are coming closer to God or you are coming away from Him. So tell them about righteousness and let them know when they make mistakes mistake and the sin they should they kill they shouldn't kill themselves for that they should just get up you know for ask for forgiveness and move forward keep on moving towards god so righteousness is the is the ability to keep on pursuing god god's righteousness god's holiness holiness is the ability to know that you are not there yet and that you want to be come holy and become more more like God. That is holiness. You want to become more like Christ. That loneliness is not a bunch of do's and don'ts. Teach your children that. <clears throat> Next point. Teach your children about death. Let them don't see death as an enemy. Let them don't see death as as something they have to fear let them never see death as something they have to run away from let them see death as something that is opening the door for their celebration something that is opening the door for their for their victory Just death is the door through which they go and receive their gift and their reward but for them to be able to expect death and to look at death like that they must live a worthy life every day when you live a worthy life you don't need to be afraid of death let, death is your celebration. Death is the servant that is coming to take you home to receive your reward. So teach them to look at death right. To look at death right. If they live right, they don't need to be, be afraid of death. If they have personal relationship with God, they don't need to be afraid of death. You can, you can only be afraid of death if you don't have personal relationship with God and if you are not doing your will if you are not doing your the will of god for your life every day but there are two things that make you to overcome the fear of death one know that you have a personal relationship a secure personal relationship with god not sin sin is not the factor relationship is what matters you sin. everybody will sin you will be sinning sometimes that's not the factor the factor that you should be concerned about is that you have personal friendly relationship with god that's number one number two Make sure that you are saved and you have personal relationship with God. Number two is that you are doing the will of the master for your life. You are pursuing your purpose. You are pleased, pursuing, living for him daily. You are living to please him. You are living to accomplish his will and his purpose for your life on a daily basis. You are not living for yourself but for him. Those are the two. second thing. If you have those two things, death is a reward for you. How many, how many points did I make in this one? Uh, seven. I think I gave you seven or nine. I I probably gave you nine. Yeah. Oh, I did. What is seven? The the last uh, the next category. The next category. The next category. Uh, The next category, there were eight, right? Eight, okay. Eight. The next category of uh, truth that I want to teach you today. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. 
says, what should we say to all these things? Here the end of the matter. The end of the matter is that you should fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. So what does that mean? Number one, always put God first. God must be priority in all you do. It's your life. You come out of him and you are going back to him. It's your life. We came from God and we are going to him. You are surrounded by God. You sh your life should all be about God. So the priority of God, that's the fear of God. The fear of God is the reverence for God, the love for God. You know, the total submission to God. That is number one. Number two. Put his will and his word, your greatest desire. Get to know as much as possible of God's will, God's word, God's ideas, God's perspective. Study the word of God to discover God. Discover God for yourself. Discover him as your father. Discover him as your friend. Discover you, him. As The more you can discover about God, the more you'll be able to act him out. So this, make God discovery. His knowledge, his principles, his, his ways, make the discovery of God your focus. <clears throat> and that's why you must have self-development on daily basis. Self-development on daily basis. Number three, teach your children to love the truth, to, have val to love values. Truth, these are all value systems. They, call, they are called one, one word truth. In the Bible, the value systems are called truth. Teach your children to love truth more than they love their own very life. That the love of truth must be exalted above everything else in them, in life. That they must not, truth must not be rel, rel, uh, rel, relational, relative. Truth must not be conditional or circumstantial. Truth, truth must be absolute and and you know constant and constant so they must love the truth of god that doesn't mean they will not fail that doesn't mean they will not make mistakes but the truth is must still remain the truth they must love the truth of god and the truth the value systems that they have you know believed in above their own very lives next thing you want to teach your children is that teach them <clears throat> Teach them to live by their conscience. Tell them that it is through the conscience that the Holy Spirit will speak to them most of the time. They should live by God's leading, and that is by listening to their conscience. They should learn to follow their conscience. They should never go against their conscience. They should never live, live against their conscience. They should always try <clears throat> to live by their conscience. Sometimes any, every, anything can happen. Anybody can violate the conscience sometimes, but primarily they should repent, go back to it, and live, you know, try to live by that conscience all the time. Next thing you want to teach your children is the right understanding of wealth. Teach your children that riches, wealth, and money is only a tool. It's only a sheet of paper, but a tool that could be used just like the church is. The church is a tool, and the and the and the and the and the and money is a tool. Also, everything is an instrument, an instrument of glorifying God, an instrument of say, you know loving God and loving people, an instrument of serving God and serving people. So you make money, and money must be subdued. If you don't subdue money, money would subdue you. So tell your people to do anything they need to subdue money with their ideas, with their knowledge, with their skills, with their products, with their services. They must do anything they need to do to conquer and subdue money so that money will not make them into slaves. Because if you don't conquer and subdue money and have enough money to be able to 
lose and it's any way you want, then you'll be a servant of money. You'll be going to work for money. You'll be going for to look for salary. You'll be a servant of money. That means money has subdued you. And when money subdues you, it means that you, you need to work. And the reason you are working is for money, not for purpose, not for will of God, not for anything, but for money. That means you have been subdued by money. And you should teach them that they have to do anything they need to do, work hard to conquer money so that they will now use money and money will not use them. But money must never be served. They must, because money, money is a bad servant. I mean, money is a bad master, but a good servant. So it cannot be your master because it's a bad one. It will destroy you, but it's a good servant. Then tell them, teach your, the next thing you want to teach your children is the importance of family. Teach your children that they shouldn't go to marry because it is time to marry or because of age. Tell them that family is just because you have some set of value system that you want to spread to the world. And you, you want to, uh, your family to help you. I mean, you want to form a family after you are ready. You must be ready before you go into family. But for, uh, what makes you to know that you are ready? You have personal relationship with God. You are God's friend. You are independent. You are self-sufficient. And you have your own set of values that you want to take to that family and you want to be a blessing to that your partner. So you are going there to, with a set of values that will make you to be a blessing, not just to your husband or to your wife, but that will, you will also be able to give to your children and descendants. So family is to f fulfill God's will also. Family is to spread God's, God's uh, truth and the value system that you have in you. So don't teach your children that they should be married because of certain age. Don't you teach your children because they should be married because of sex. Don't teach your children that they have to be married because pressure is coming upon them or they have to have children. No, they have to, they, that the marriage is only what they need to do if there is need for it, if, there is, if they feel that they are ready for it. If they are not ready for it, they should rather just live for God and for His righteousness. Next group of, next group of uh, truth, I gave you seven points right now, yeah? Yeah, I think I gave you seven points. Next group of, next group, next category of, next group of values that I want to give you. The next group of cat the next category is values value system in relations to yourself to himself the value system in relations to yourself values in relations to yourself okay there were six I gave you eh? not seven sorry there were six the value systems in relation to the child to himself. the values in relation to, to the child. One, teach that child the power of self-control. Let him know why it's important to control himself. This is the fruit of the spirit. He should not live out of emotion or feelings of self-interest. He should live to subject his emotions and feelings under the power of his values. Next point. It should be to, it should be taught to live that everything he has, himself included, belongs to God. That he God owns him. That he is God's servant through and through. And everything he has, he has to use to serve God. At the end of the day, to serve God and to serve people. 
He's not on earth to just amass wealth or some of success for himself. Even his success and wealth and everything should be used to serve people and to serve God. Next point. You should teach your children not to live like a biomass. That means they shouldn't live by the dictates of instincts. You shouldn't live by the dictates of stimulus or reflexes. You should always live like a homo sapiens. You should always live from consciousness, from active consciousness, based on his value system, based on the will of God, and based on his goals and purposes. Next point, teach that child the value of work, the value of work and the value of time. The value of work and the value of time. I have a whole teaching on that. Let him know that it's not just need that is that it's not just how hard it works that matters, but how diligently it works. Next point, till that teach the child about responsibility. He has to learn to take responsibility for himself. He has to learn to take responsibility for people around him, for his family. He has to have res no, learn to take responsibility for, for his family, for the people around him, for the world around him, and for his country. And of course, definitely for the will of God and for his calling. Next point, teach your child about the difference between self-esteem, that there is a difference between self-esteem and pride. It should have self-respect, self-esteem, but it should not be proudful. It should not be proud. It should not be arrogant. It should not be proud. Next point, tell him that his greatest wealth is his ability to be broken before God. Personal relationship with God. His ability to be intimate and broken before God. Okay, that is all I have for you today. Let me tell you another thing. The only thing is that you must have a good atmosphere that you develop where you have this kind of teachings with your children. Make sure that you create a very good atmosphere. Let them relax. Let them, you know, joke. Let them, you know, you know, be happy about it and talk. Let it be interactive. Let it be free discussion. Let everybody participate. Let, you know, everything be free and take them warm by one. These are, you know, value system that if you put in all your children from the beginning of their life or through your life, even you yourself, you will be not a biomass that is not fully human on the earth, but you will be on top and not in and the last. You will be the head and not the last. You will be the first and not last and uh, not bottom. And uh, you will be able to be one of those 
movers and shakers of our world. You'll be a personality, personality that is here for a purpose, that is focus-oriented, goal-oriented, that is fulfilling the will and purpose of God, and that knows what is here for, that is here not just to waste time, but that is uh, performing uh, the will of God on a daily basis. Well, so Merry Christmas to you again. I hope this was a good Christmas gift to you. And like I said, uh, tonight we are coming back with the children. And But, you know, if you really want to start your, in your year in a revolutionary way, you will need to go get that book, uh, Insulted by Ungodliness. Insulted by Ungodliness will transform your life for the new year and put a new fire and new passion in you to live right for God. But I hope I was able to give you enough today. Like I said, this is a whole month's teaching. If I teach twice a day, it's for a whole month. But I was able to give them to you in one and a half hours. Uh, just to give you as much as possible so that you just have the list and then you'll be able to use them one by one. You could teach children. When it comes to children, these teachings, you can teach them for 10 years or 12 years. You can teach them for 10 years and you, you, have, you are still not finished. Uh, so, you know, those are resources that you could use to, to, to monitor and to form a new category of people on the earth. Well, let me see uh, what was the time here. Okay. Let me see what people are writing. She, Sandra, hugs you, hugs, Pastor. Love you loads. Thank you. Deborah, there is fire in my bone. Fire in my bone. <laughs> <laughs> Ufuoma, I feel so privileged. Much, much love and respect. GD Craig, this is true church. Developing God's people to assume their role on the earth. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Delaja. Rochelle White, what a gift from God you are to us. I'm going to watch this over and over again. Yep. Eric said, Thanks, Pastor. This is a great, great gift. Uh, Elizabeth, big ox, Pastor. Love you plenty, plenty. Mkiru, wow, 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 wow. What a good mind. I'm so grateful for this message. I'm starting afresh. So help me, God. May God continue to uplift you up. This is life coaching, sound teaching about life. Thank you, Dr. Adelaja. But you see, all these things now, you, you have not received them yet because I just rushed them to you. You need to listen to them to make them your own. Right now, they are not your own. At least you know the material is there and you know they are somewhere, so you can get them from somewhere. Another thing I didn't... How many points did I give you the last one? Six. Let me give you one more. Is it seven? I gave you seven points. Let me give you one more point. The last one. Teach them how to overcome trials and its tribulations. Let them know that trials, tests, and crisis is part of life. And they shouldn't run away from them. They should confront them and overcome them. Crisis, trials, tribulations are a part of life. They shouldn't hate them. They shouldn't run away from them. And, you know, I already have a lot of teachings here about that. So, you can get them to hear that. She gone Wafo said, Pastor, we have to teach ourselves first before the children. We can't give what we don't have. Yes, another thing, talking about teaching uh, them ourselves first i want to tell you that this is not an exhausted list okay I, I just give you a list of what you could teach you know since i'm saying it's a list it means that there are so many other things that you could teach so you yourself could add as many things as you want so these are not exhausted list it's not an exhausted list it's not it's, it's, it could be expanded you could add many many other things that you want okay you could add as many things as you want in there this is just a I think I already gave you too much, but you know, you, it's not an exhausted list, just for you to know, it's not a full list.
Elizabeth Ali is asking, please, Pastor, at what age do you teach them about death? Anytime. Anytime you feel they are ready for it. I'm trying to read your comment. Omonike says, wow, wow, wow. The church, I mean, Omonike, yeah. The church should serve its members, the highest of God's creation, his people. Pastor Sunday, God bless and increase you. Uh, Theophilus, God has a business on earth and we're uh, made to take care of the business of God, yeah. She gone well for said, Oh my pastor, <clears throat> you are just the best. I wonder how I can get everyone I know to hear this truth. Yet and they say, Wow, Dr. Adelaja, you are touching something in my brain right now about the church. She they said, I had my program yesterday here in Italy marriage forum, teaching them how to apply kingdom principles in their marriage life, regions and life. For the beginning, everyone loves it and they were blessed. We are unable to cover it because the cameraman disappeared. His monthly program for now, hoping for better. God richly bless you, sir. I appreciate you. More anointing and more grace in Jesus' name. Kiru said, what a great Christmas gift, Dr. Adelaja. You are the sweetest Santa. <laughs> Yet today says, Dr. Adelaja, I think we should have these principles and blocks in a small handy booklet. Yeah, I think so. That's why I'm always looking for writers so if you have some writers or some writers are interested let them get in touch with me ah deborah cole said i got my book already that is the book on uh insulted by ungodliness she said i'm a freedom fighter already because i'm already in chapter four it's been chapter four already made me a freedom fighter <laughs> yeah insulted by ungodliness is a word on his own ngoya shari said it's amazing so helpful and practical thank you pastor E.K. Madhu said, I just finished my solitude this month. Beautiful. 
Anastasia said, got mine too. Ushe, she said, Pastor, on criticism, there are a lot of young men who sincerely want to serve God, but are simply copying the pastors they see and spreading evil through church in Nigeria. Shouldn't we speak against their actions? Oh, you should speak against their actions. You should speak against evil, but not speak against people. You see, that criticism is, I mean, the negative criticism is speaking against people, but the right criticism is speaking against, I mean, speaking against practices, speaking about issues, speaking against wrong things that have been done. That must be done, but not necessarily against individuals. So you are right, we should speak against their actions, but not against uh, individual people. Deborah said, Dr. Adelaja, you are so loving that you teach us these values and principles you have gathered for many years, pouring everything out. Wow, Pastor, we cannot pay you for this, except God who knows what your desire is, issue your passing through, that you cannot share with no one. It will make you see the back of your enemies in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Noel is saying, is it possible that the status of the children's father be a pressure on them and add their responsibility? I think you should ask my children. I think they were asked that question yesterday. It depends on how the children are taught. Uh, but uh, in my own case, they have been taught well, so they, they had answered it yesterday that it's not, it, it doesn't put pressure on them. So I see that not too many people have shared this message. Yes, I think we all need to go and share this video. It's going to help a lot of people. Mkiru said, I have made a lot of notes, but I have to listen again and again. I'm sure there are some hidden points here. I will take it step by step. I will learn to teach my kids and in my world group. You have given me a plan for the whole year. Thank you, Pastor. She go. You know the people who live in Jesus' time didn't realize how big he was. I pray eyes will open now to recognize and know who you are. What a privilege to live in the same time with you and learn from you. Thank you. Okay, guys, thank you so much for everything. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you in the evening, okay? Blessings. Bye.